Let us now take the next and the last model from this topic where we are going to discuss some questions related to simple interest. The first example here is Varun borrows Rs. 1500 from two money lenders. He pays interest at the rate of 12% per annum for one loan and at the rate of 14% per annum for the other. How much does he borrow at 12% per annum if the total interest paid at the end of the year is Rs. 186? So as you can see, Varun has borrowed 1500 from two different persons. He pays interest at 12% per annum for one loan and at the rate of 14% per annum for the other. So we need to find out how much money was borrowed at the rate of 12% per annum if the total interest at the end of one year, at the end of one year is rupees 186. So the point to be understood here is from two different persons, the total amount that Varun has borrowed is 1500. So let us assume that Varun has borrowed P1 at 12% per annum and P2 at 14% per annum. Let us assume that the simple interest on the first loan is SI1 and the simple interest on the second loan is SI2. That means simple interest on P1 at 12% per annum is SI1 and simple interest on P2 at 14% per annum is SI2. And also we know that the total interest that is SI1 plus SI2 is equal to 186 rupees. And we need to find out how much has been borrowed at 12% per annum. That means P1 is equal to what has to be calculated. So from the given question, we know that P1 plus P2, that means the total of both the loans, the principal amount from first lender and the principal amount from the second lender totally amounts to 1500 rupees. So the total principal amount P1 plus P2 is 1500. And we also know that simple interest from, from first one plus simple interest from second one is 186. Now, the first amount has been borrowed at the rate of 12% per annum. So, the simple interest that we get would be 12% of P1. So, we can say 12% of P1 and the simple interest from second one would be 14%. Why? Because second amount has been borrowed at 14%. So, 14% of P2 is equal to 186 rupees. So, this is what we can understand from the second equation. So, this can be taken as 12 by 100 P1 plus 14 by 100 P2 equals to 186. Now by taking two common we get 6 P1 plus 7 P2 divided by 100 equals to 93. So this equation comes out to be 6 P1 plus 7 P2 equals to 93 into 100 that is 9300. So as you can see here we have got two equations. One equation is for the total of two loans that is 1500 and the second equation is in terms of 6P1 plus 7P2 equals to 9300. Two equations with two variables can be solved. The two variables here are P1 and P2. So we now need to solve these two equations such that we can find out the value P1. Now to find out what is P1 we need to cancel P2 from both the equations. And to do that, we need to multiply this equation with 7. Why? Because this becomes 7p2 and this is already in terms of 7p2. So once the coefficients are equal, the two values can be cancelled by subtracting the equations. So let us multiply equation number 1 with 7. So we get here 7p1 plus 7p2 equals to 1500 into 7 is 10,500. And we know that the second equation is 6p1 plus 7p2 equals to 9300. So these are the two equations that we have. Now by subtracting these two equations we get 7p1 minus 6p1 is p1 plus this 7p2 and 7p2 gets cancelled equals to 10500 minus 9300. That would be 1200 rupees. So very clearly the amount that has been borrowed at 12% per annum p1 is equal to 1200 rupees. So this is how you can simply frame the proper equations in terms of P1 and P2 and solve those two equations to find out P1 or P2 respectively. Let us now take another typical example based on simple interest. The question is the simple interest on a sum of money will be rupees 300 after 5 years. In the next 5 years if the principal is trebled then what will be the total interest at the end of 10th year. So very clearly the question says the simple interest on some principal amount is rupees 300 for 5 years. That means the total interest for 5 years is 300 rupees. 
in the next five years the principal is tripled that means the principal becomes three times then what will be the total interest at the end of 10th year so as given in the question the simple interest for five years is equal to rupees 300 and in the next five years the principal is tripled that means the principal amount p becomes three times so we can say that the new principal p dash is equal to three times the original principal p we know that simple interest is equal to p into t into r by 100 that means simple interest is proportional to the principal amount so as in when the principal increases the simple interest increases and as in when the principal decreases the simple interest decreases same thing happens with simple interest and time and simple interest and rate of interest that means simple interest is proportional to principal amount it is proportional to time period and is proportional to rate of interest so when any of these three increases the simple interest also increases proportionately and when any of, when any of these three decreases the simple interest again decreases proportionately so as the principal becomes three times the simple interest will also become three times as they are directly proportional to each other so i can say that the simple interest si dash for the next five years would be three times the simple interest for the first five years so that is equal to three into 300 that is 900 rupees so the total interest at the end of 10 years would be the interest for first five years plus the interest of next five years so the total interest will be equal to the interest of first five years that is 300 rupees and the interest in the next five years that is 900 so the total here comes out to be 1200 rupees so this is how this question can be simply answered by taking the interest for the first three years three times so remember that simple interest is directly proportional to principal and time and the rate of interest so as any of these three increases or decreases the simple interest also increases or decreases proportionately that's all from this topic of simple interest and compound interest as you have seen in most of the questions from this topic we can use the concept of percentages to get the answers in a smart way Practice well on these questions. See you in the next session. Thank you.